Ah, mobile photography. A term that if you said to a photographer just five years ago, they'd scoff at you. Mobile photography? <laughs> but times have changed. Now smartphone cameras are being taken seriously. So it's time that you learned how to make the most of the one that you have. Intro. What's going on everybody? My name is Kenneth Fleece and today we're going to be learning eight ways to maximize our mobile photography. Recently I've been participating in a hashtag on Instagram called hashtag team pixel. In this hashtag people are challenged to take amazing photos using only their pixel. I saw this and I thought it was a great idea so I started participating and got really into it. So much so that I started looking up tips and tricks and secrets. I ended up learning a lot that I think anybody could benefit from so here are eight tips to start killing it in mobile photography. Tip number one, get perspectives that people don't see every day. This may sound very simple, this may sound very cliche, but as I look through different pictures, I just see a lot of the same. And that's not to say that that's a bad thing. A lot of the photos are really good, but to make your work stand out, it has to be something that is unique. When you go to shoot your subject, Think about all the ways that you have never seen it before. Look around and play around with your camera and your subject and see if you can get them to work in some way that you've never seen before. Try to take a vantage point on your subject in which the human eye does not typically interact. So what does that mean? It means maybe not taking a straight on shot of a cool looking building. Maybe going up to the corner and, and bending the phone up and then getting the corner shot up the center of the photo. That's an odd angle because typically people don't just walk up to buildings and be like, but when you're scrolling through Instagram, it's cool to be able to scroll upon that and be like, oh, I've never looked at a building like that before. That's different. Double tap. Getting those odd perspectives leads into tip number two, getting low and getting close. The reason I say to get in close is due to how smartphone cameras are built. Over these last few years, smartphone cameras have gotten better and better at detecting small details. Get in really close and play with the focus until it focuses as close as it possibly can and then snap your shot. Snapping a shot this close will really bring out all the intricate details of whatever it is you're shooting. And then if you add a little structure to it, just look. And the reason I say to get low is because nobody ever in their daily commute just gets down there and they're just like, I'm gonna walk like this, this is fine. It's really a vantage point that no one ever sees. So if you start getting really low to the ground and taking pictures, it also is something that's interesting to look at because our brain isn't used to seeing it. Which brings us to tip number three. The rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is that grid that you see that has the lines that are intersecting at different points on the screen. What this grid was designed for is to help you frame a shot. For instance, you could use it to make sure a horizon perfectly aligned, or maybe to make sure that your subject is dead center, or to make sure the close up you're getting is exactly one third of the screen. When somebody says use the rule of thirds, immediately we think the person is saying to use either the first, second, or third slot on the screen, which is not the case. The rule of thirds is actually used by the intersections, not the spaces. So you line up your subject with one of the three lines as they go, or maybe where they intersect. And this really gives an interesting structure to photos. And now we have tip number four, spend time scouting locations. Take some time to just walk around wherever you're going to shoot. I promise you if you walk around a little bit longer than you're going to, you're gonna find something that you weren't going to shoot before. And usually they're great photos that are just waiting to be uncovered, but we just walk right by them. Which leads into our next point. Look for a high vantage point. This one will be harder if you're in a rural area. Rural. Rural. Country. If you're in the country. But if you're in a city, you're pretty much one parking deck away from getting a pretty sweet horizon shot. A lot of the time a high vantage point means a beautiful backdrop with a lot of lights and big buildings. So try using one of the previous tips and getting in close on a subject while on top of something to get an entire city out of focus all for the focused subject. Which leads into number six, which is to test multiple angles. It's important when having limited time and taking photos to make sure you take advantage of all the angles that are presented to you. A good practice to have is to take your camera and just kind of go around your subject and look at it from various angles without ever pressing the shutter, obviously, unless you really like the picture. But this will give you different views that you didn't even think about using just because you went and circled around and maybe looked up at the subject and then came to the top of the subject and looked down. 
all of these different viewpoints give different results for different subjects. So knock yourself out. Number seven is to not forget to turn your phone around. This one does not apply to every single phone that is out there because some phones have a camera at the top center, which means that it's going to be the same whether it's one way or the other. But with phones like say the Google Pixel, the camera's on one side. So if it's on the left side of the phone, you can get it closer to the ground in one orientation than in the other. So pay attention to this. Sometimes when I'm going to take a close up shot of something, I can't quite get it to focus right or I just can't get it to look the way I want it to and I don't even realize it's because I haven't flipped the phone back over. You flip the phone back over to have the camera closer to the ground and a lot of times you'll get those better close-up shots. Our eighth and final tip is editing. So when you get that sweet shot, sometimes there's just one thing off or maybe you just want to make it a little bit better and it takes an editing software to bring that to reality. Now, a lot of people like to just edit in the Instagram app and that's fine, but there are some really good options out there and I really do recommend that you give a few of them a try. The one that we're gonna be using in this tutorial is Snapseed. And it's my favorite because it's very intricate in its design. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, I would have chosen the Lightroom app for this, but the Lightroom app costs money. And I want this tutorial to be available to anybody. So if you have the Lightroom app and you really want a tutorial on that, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get right on it. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using Snapseed. So the link for it is in the description below. And let's move over to the desk so we can get started. All right, so first things first, let's hop into Snapseed. Once inside, you're gonna to have to open your photo. I'm selecting one I took that has a really cool looking sky. Once you have your photo loaded up, go ahead and head into tools. Once you're in tools, look for the word selective and you'll see that circle with the dot in the center. Once you've selected that, you're gonna be in the selective tool. Now, the reason I really like this tool is because like I mentioned earlier, it's extremely intricate. So when you first get into the tool, you're going to see that the blue plus on the bottom is already highlighted. A little backstory for this photo. Caitlin and I, Caitlin being the girl in the photo, when we were about to cross the street, we both noticed how beautiful the sky looked. And the sky actually looked like it does in this photo. It's not yet edited. It's just very blue and deep and the structure is still in the clouds. I thought it was a great shot. So I lined her up and we got a pretty good shot out of it. But when I took the photo, I had to drop the exposure because the sky was absolutely washed out. But by bringing down the exposure, I not only brought out the sky, but I also lost some of the light that was truly in the clouds at that moment. So it just makes it look a lot less epic, a lot less dramatic like it was in the moment. So this is a perfect example of why you might want to use selective edits. Now you're gonna notice wherever you put your finger down, a magnifier is gonna follow. And as this magnifier follows, it's going to change colors depending on what you're selecting. So if you want to change color in the sky, you have to select where the ring is blue and choose the tone of blue that you're going to want to edit. I want it right above her head because I want to bring the brightness out that was there and add some contrast so you can really see the difference between her head and the clouds. So to get started, you drag your finger from the right or to the left and the edits will be applied and you can see that I'm getting brightness everywhere, even some in the white up top, and I don't want that for those clouds, so we're gonna change that right now. If you're getting edits in places that you don't want, put a second finger down on the screen. You'll see that red. That red is showing you exactly where it's being affected by these edits. In order to increase the range, you need only drag your fingers out. To decrease the range, you pinch your fingers in. And I'm gonna do that because I only want it in that blue spot right there. So that's perfect, I'm gonna leave that there. And now I'm gonna add some contrast, like I said. Then I'm gonna add a little saturation to deepen the blue, and I'm gonna add some structure to really bring out the details in the clouds. You tap the eye icon down below and you'll see the full image without any of the icons in the way. So it's looking pretty good, but now I feel like it's a little lackluster on other parts of the screen. So in order to add these edits to other places, I can hold down the icon that I just finished editing and you see those paper icons that typically mean copy. You select that and you hold down where else on the screen you want to edit, let go, and you'll see the paste icon. You'll paste it and you can literally copy and paste your edits. So this is exactly the edits that I just posted in the center. Um, and it's not really gonna work fully, it doesn't seem. Actually, no, it, looks, it doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna wanna bring that down. So you can switch between the editors just by selecting them like so. Now you can increase the range here so it doesn't look so selected. Now, when you look at the center one here, if you put two fingers down, you see that it is going into her head a little bit, and I don't want her head edited at all. So, in order to fix this, I can add another point by selecting the plus at the bottom, and then tap right in her head. And I'm just gonna place another one right there. And you can see that this is selecting the entire image. Let's bring that down a little bit. And I'll bring that right over her head. And now, you'll see that 
it's no longer affecting her head at all. So these selective points do not interfere with each other. The edits are individualized between the two points. So if you want to edit a certain spot and you want it to get even more selective than it already is, just add another point directly to it and add no edits. And then there won't be any edits in that particular spot. And then you can just drag it in or out depending on how far you want it to not edit. And so I'm gonna have it right over her head and into the building a little bit. And there you go. So once you're done, there's a check mark on the bottom right, you select that. And to look at the edits that you've made, you select the photo and just hold it. And you'll see that all the edits go away, you let go, and they come back. You can really just take a look and see your handiwork. And this is exactly the effect I wanted. I really wanted to bring out the blue in the clouds and add a little bit more structure to them. And I think we've done that pretty well. Then once you're done, you select export on the bottom right, and then export again. But that's it. I really hope you found these tips helpful. If so, make good use of that like button and please subscribe. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time.